Welcome to the Help Your Patients Quit Smoking, Free Resources and Programs for Your Patients conference call. My name is Vicki, and I will be your operator for today's call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. Later, we will conduct a question and answer session. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I will now turn the call over to Amy Lenz. Amy, you may begin. Great. Thank you, Vicki. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Again, my name is Amy Lenz. I will be your facilitator today. I'm going to take just a few moments to uh, introduce DHQC. Uh, we are a private nonprofit health quality consulting company that serves as a quality innovation network, quality improvement organization for Maryland and Virginia. We also serve as a practice transformation network and assist physicians in Virginia, Maryland, D.C., and West Virginia. Please note that today's session will be recorded and posted on our online community in a few days. If you're not currently a member of our online community, you can sign up by clicking on the link posted on uh, the top of the slide and will also be posted in chat. During today's webinar, we encourage you to submit your comments and questions to chat. You may access the chat, the chat function by clicking on the chat icon in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. While the United States has made progress in tackling tobacco-related death and disease, tobacco use remains the leading cause of premature and preventable death. Tobacco cessation continues to be a national priority. CMS, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, considers tobacco cessation an important component of patient wellness. Today's session will provide you with various cessation resources to help you successfully report these me measures. I want to thank the American Cancer Society for partnering with BHKC to plan today's session. We are pleased to have quite a few experts joining us today. I'd like to take a moment to briefly introduce them. First, we have Dr. DiClemente, who is a professor of psychology at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, and director of several department centers, including the Maryland Foot Tobacco Resource Center, the Center for Community Collaboration, and the Home Visiting Training Center. Next, we will have Shelly McAllister, Shelly is the product manager for the cancer, American Cancer Society. She is a cancer specialist with 16 years of experience in tobacco control and leads programs concentrated on cancer prevention through behavior and policy change. Also joining us is Shana Hashim. She has been with the Maryland Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, Center for Tobacco Prevention and Control since September 2014. As a project coordinator, she oversees all aspects of the quit line. And last but not least is Rita Miller. Rita serves as the Cessation Service Coordinator for the Tobacco Use Control Program at the Virginia Department of Health. She's responsible for the coordination of services for Quit Now Virginia. Thank you all for joining us today. We have a great session planned for you, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Dr. DiClemente. Great. Um, yeah, you can just move through there. We're going to just try and how, talk about how do you start a conversation. Obviously, if you're on this call already, you already know that um, we, we are going in the right direction in terms of smoking and tobacco use, but we still have a ways to go. There's at least 40 million people who smoke today. Okay. Um, the, the, why we're talking to you is that the Medicaid recipients are really disproportionately affected by tobacco related disease, uh, and their smoking prevalence is greater than the whole uh, U.S. adult population, so it's about 53% about greater. So we need to keep working with those folks. You can move to the next slide. Um, you know, the current smoking in Maryland, if you just take the Maryland group and look at that, is, is really going well in the right direction. But you also see that what happens is it's the lower SES folks, the people who are making the least amount of money, who can least afford to smoke, who are smoking. So we need you to kind of really reach out to them and to really work with uh, that population. Go ahead. Next slide. Uh, really important because as you, as a, a, a medical professionals, you really can know that we know about cancer, but actually smoking affects lots and lots and lots of different systems in in the body. And uh, the folks, the the things that we have in red here are the things that were added just in the 50th anniversary uh, Surgeon General report uh, in 2014. So you can see things like diabetes and uh, sexual functioning and rheumatoid arthritis um, and colorectal cancer and uh, lots of these kind of conditions are affected by smoking 
and, and smoke can contribute to uh, those diseases. And so you, your opportunity, it doesn't matter what area you're looking at in terms of the presenting problem that the, the patient brings in, you have an opportunity to talk about smoking uh, if they come in with any of these issues. And that's the point is that, that the, the, the medical conditions will be a real prompt for starting the conversation um, uh, with, with the client and with the, with the patients. Go ahead. Um, the other thing that we're more real aware of above is secondhand and thirdhand smoke. And, and there's lots of people who die from both of those um, and, and are poisoned by thirdhand smoke and who die from secondhand smoke. And as you see, secondhand smoke also has a range of effects, um, deleterious effects on those folks. So this is what the looks like in terms of annual deaths. I mean, we're talking about 480,000 deaths attributable to smoking each year here in the U.S. Um, and you see cancers are certainly a big part of that, but, but heart disease, uh, vascular diseases, uh, and, and, and other kinds of uh, cerebral vascular disease are really responsible for, for, it's really responsible for a number of those issues as well. The other important thing to remember is that for every one person who dies, there's another 20 who are suffering serious smoking-related illnesses. Uh, and that's eight or nine million people in the U.S. So we need to kind of keep focused on the problem. Go ahead. So the, the issue is how do you start a conversation with patients? The way that you talk with patients about their health can really importantly influence their motivation and, and their behavior change. So that's really the issue. Go ahead and move forward. Um, when people change when they become interested and concerned, convinced that the change is going to be in their best interest and they're going to benefit it, them more than cost them, uh, get organized and get a plan of action and get committed to doing that, and then take the actions that are necessary to, to make the change and sustain the change. Your conversations about smoking need to focus a lot on the first two because what you're going to get in the last part of this uh, webinar is that there's lots of other folks who you can uh, transition these folks, uh, their smokers to, who are willing to help them with the planning and the taking action and giving them some of the other kind of things that they need to implement their plan. So the challenge is how do you get them interested and convinced uh, for most of you? So we have what we call the stages of change. Many of you may be familiar with that. But it just says that if you have somebody coming into you who's in pre-contemplation, who's not seriously thinking about quitting smoking, your challenge is not to get them to call the quit line, which they're not going to do. It's to get them interested and concerned about the need, tying together your or the medical concerns with the smoking and the risk and trying to kind of have a, an open, a conversation with them about that. We're helping them with the risk-reward analysis and contemplation. If they're considering it, really helping to tip the balance. Um, and if they're working, to really get them to commit to, to kind of if they're agreed and they're decided to get them to commit and to create an acceptable, acceptable and effective plan uh, for themselves. And then again, like I said, in action, they have to implement the plan and they have to ultimately, uh, those of us who are former smokers, have to consolidate that change and become non-smokers for life. Okay, moving on. So it is a process. And, and you, we're not asking you to do the whole thing. We're asking you to start the conversation so that you can actually have that conversation with, with them in terms of moving them forward wherever they are. If they have relapsed, give them hope. Almost everyone who's quit smoking has tried multiple times. So keep working on that and, and, and don't give up on them and don't let them give up on themselves as part of the conversation. So move that. So the, the kind of the conversation, the communication style that works best for behavior change conversations are really what some of you have been taught is called patient-centered communication. Others are you now taught and that's motivational interviewing kind of the, the style and the spirit that you use. So it's really about empathy. It's, it's less about waving your finger and saying you need to quit smoking. They know that already. Um, almost all the smokers in the United States, 99% of them, will tell you that smoking is dangerous for their health. So you're, you're not kind of give them the information that's going to do that. You're going to try and get them to kind of 
activate that information that they already have. So empathy, being collaborative with them, showing care and concern, appreciating their experience. They're not saying, well, but you can do it, you can do it. Listen to them first, figure out what they've maybe tried, and then help to kind of encourage them to move forward. And you're always aiming at a listening patient motivation for change, right? So the key to getting smokers to quit is, is there's no magic. Uh, it, it's really persistent efforts, repeated contacts, helping them keep making the next step, building their confidence that they can do this and their motivation that it's really in their best interest to do that. And then trying to match your strategy in terms of communication strategy with the patient's stage of change. Go ahead. There are really two aspects to uh, tobacco dependence. Obviously, there's the physical part of that. There's an addiction to nicotine. And, and the good news is we have medications for that. Uh, and then there's the behavioral aspect, which is breaking the habit. And, and, and we also have really good strategies and ways to go about doing that. Both of those, the, the medication and the strategies, have got to be used. They've got to be used by the client. And that's really where the challenge comes in, to make sure that they're motivated enough to not only just make a call, but actually to follow through. Okay, well, next slide. Um, there, there are, you know, the medications really help with the withdrawal issues that many of them may complain about, and the NRT and the medications don't have the harmful effects. And I will tell you that many uh, physicians now are becoming much more uh, comfortable and aggressive in terms of using medications to manage the smoking and to help the people with the smoking. I mean, Varenicline is probably one of the, uh, which is Chantix, is probably one of the the, the, the most um, effective medications. But NRT, combinations of NRT, patch, and gum, and lozenge, and, and other kinds of, um, and, and the Zyban are all helpful medications depending on them. But you have to kind of watch some of those medications and make sure that they don't just give up what those are the side effects. Next. The other part, as we said, is really the behavioral part, breaking the habit and helping them to kind of realize that they've got to, they've got to do some things a little bit differently. They've got to switch things around in order to be able to really break the habit. The habit is not just uh, physical and, and brain chemistry. It's also behavioral. Next. So how do you help with the behavioral part? You know, help them preparing and getting a plan. Almost all the groups that you'll... Uh, see in the next uh, section of this webinar, use preparing and planning and helping the, the individual client individualize the plan, tailor the plan for them. Um, if you need more education about the physical and behavioral change process they're going to get them to get that, and you get some of that as well. There's lots of Rx for Change and other kinds of websites out there that you can, if you're feeling uncomfortable, you can get a lot more information about. Um, they're more successful if they get committed to their own personal reasons to quit and that they get support, offer support. Uh, they get a lot of nagging. Smokers get a lot of nagging. They don't get a lot of support. Uh, next. So we do know this is treatment effectiveness literature says that if you combination treatments that, are, that really deal with both the physical and the behavioral are up to four times more effective than just trying to quit on your own. So... Only about 7% of smokers remain smoke-free one year after quitting when they quit on their own. But the abstinence rates associated with telephone quit lines is around 30%. I mean, it's at seven months, there's 30% 30-day 30 abstinence. So we can improve the quit, the efficiency and the effectiveness of their quits if you will get them the help and the support that they can need. They need to do that. Next. So basically, this is the conversation. Make sure that you ask every patient about their smoking at every visit. Um, provide some brief advice, especially connecting it to the medical condition that you are trying to kind of focus on and address. Assess their readiness. If they're really not ready, kind of keep working on the, uh, on the motivational part. If they're ready, really connect them to quit lines and other kind of stuff. And even in getting the ready, getting them ready in terms of the motivational part, there's lots of resources online and other places where they can kind of test out their readiness and check on their uh, reasons for quitting and doing those kind of things. And finally, the most effective is really to kind of get them to a point where 
they're ready, you're ready, and connect them. Connect them to a, 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 you know, a quick line, connect them to someone who can do a brief intervention with them uh, and, and work with them. So that's why we call it the A three Cs. Ask, advise, assess, and connect. So hopefully that this is giving you a background for having that conversation about change and, and making that conversation be more effective. And the next part we'll talk a lot about the different resources that you can connect folks with in order to do that. Thank you. Hi, this is Great. Shelley McAllister. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, Shelley. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So this is Shelley McAllister. I'm with the American Cancer Society, and I wanted to talk today about some of the resources that are available and maybe considering us as a triage point, if you will, for patients um, when you're when they need help with, with quitting smoking. First, we have a toll-free number, 800-227-2345. We have live people that are there to talk with callers 24 hours a day, seven days a week. When you call us, uh, you listen to the VRU options. If you press option three, it's going to take you to two different options for help with tobacco. Um, when Dr. Dave Kalinsky talks about the stages of change, um, you might think of option one as someone that's more ready to to talk to someone about quitting. They are ready to do a quit plan. Um, so they're a little bit maybe farther along in the stage of change. If you look at option two, that option is for people that are maybe, maybe they're thinking about it, or maybe it's somebody that's calling that has a question about their husband that smokes. Or maybe it's um, you as a provider, maybe you want brochures that you can have in your practice or find out a little bit more about local resources that might be available to people. So we have two different options. You press one, at that, in, um, and if you can go to the next slide, I'll walk through just kind of how this, how this works. So if you press one and you're ready to enroll in a coaching program, what that does is it looks at the person where they're um, – it takes them from awesome and often asks three questions, the person's um, employer, the health plan that they have, and then also looks at their state zip code. And based on those three criteria, often it's going to offer them the most comprehensive benefit. And oftentimes, um, specifically, particularly for this call today, um, those people will – end up enrolling in the Maryland State Quit Line or the Virginia State Quit Line. So that is a way that they can get to their State Quit Line is by calling us and, press, and pressing option one. Um, option two is that, again, that general tobacco question. Somebody has, they want brochures for their office. They are calling because they need to know how to help their husband quit smoking or um, they want to know local resources. So there's, so you can either enroll in coaching by calling us, and it will take you to your state quit line, or enroll you in your health plan or employer-provided program if Optum is the, the, um, the vendor for those, or you can get those general information pamphlets, those things. Next slide, please. Some other options that are available, uh, if you go to become an ex that's available through the American Legacy, which is now called the Truth Foundation, you can do an online quit plan through that. We have a mobile app that's available um, for download for Android and iOS um, operating platforms, and you can set a quit date and do other things with that mobile app. There's also a, a free, smoke-free text program that's available, and I know everyone was given these this presentation prior to the call today, so you can click on the links um, in that PowerPoint to find out a little bit more information about those. Next slide. Also, we have um, on cancer.org, we have a Stay Healthy page, which has more information about putting smoking. And something else that we've had for the last two years, we'll have an updated toolkit available mid-August, is um, a communications toolkit specifically for health systems. And this toolkit has materials that are downloadable from cancer.org. You can co-brand them. There are sample emails, social media posts, and activity ideas for Great American Smokeout, which happens the third uh, Thursday of every November. And there's also a letter that you could send out to your clients or your current smokers 
from a doctor or provider. So it's just a way to promote that Great American Smoke Out event, and that's something that's available from our uh, cancer.org homepage. And if for some reason you want to know, um, maybe you maybe you have some of your clients that are from a neighboring state, it's not just Virginia or Maryland, um, there is a map that shows what type of foot lines and the services and resources that are available through each of those state foot lines. There's a map through the North American Quit Line Consortium, and then I included a link there as well. Great. Thank you, Shelley. We'll go ahead and uh, turn it over to Sana. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Great. Great. Thank you to the organizers um, for having me on. Um, we can go ahead and move uh, to the first slide. Um, so again, my name is Sana Hashim. I'm with the Maryland Department of Health. Um, we have actually been asked by our administration as we head into the summer months um, to present just a few resources on the Zika virus. Um, so you can actually advance to the next slide. Um, it has a list of some resources. Um, the last website is the state website um, that provides all of the information um, about preventing um, the virus. So definitely check that out, um, and certainly feel free to reach out to me if I can provide any more um, information. Um, you can advance to the next slide. Um, so Dr. DiClemente um, already covered this. Um, we know that tobacco use is an addiction um, and not a habit, and so that's certainly um, how we're framing our work here. Um, you can advance to the next slide. Um, and again, um, there's uh, plenty of health benefits um, that come with smoking, um, both immediate and long term, really within a few minutes, um, blood pressure and pulse start to drop. Um, and as you look forward through the decades, um, the risk of certain diseases and even death is similar to that of a non-smoker. So you can move forward. Um, so here in Maryland, we have the Maryland Tobacco Quit Line. Um, it's a free evidence-based counseling program available to all Marylanders over the age of 13 um, to assist in quitting tobacco. Um, it's available 24-7. Um, the phone number is 1-800-QUIT-NOW. And we offer services in English, Spanish, um, and 200 other languages. Um, it's, a, it's a very um, effective program. It's confidential. Um, and again, it, it is a clinical uh, intervention. You can advance to the next. Um, so in terms of the services we offer, um, we do serve um, all those who are over 13. For those who are over 18, um, they do have access to uh, certain benefits like free nicotine replacement therapy. Um, we expanded this uh, last year, um, just over a year ago, um, to a 12-week supply. Um, initially, it was a four-week week, so now we do offer a 12-week supply. It's reassessed every four weeks um, for dosing, as well as uh, the appropriateness of uh, the product if the participant prefers um, one over the other. Um, they're also able to get both if they desire. Um, we do have a web support program um, through our website, Smoking Stop Here, um, and we do have a text support program um, for those who um, would like to get text messages encouraging them um, to quit. And we can move to the next slide. Um, just a little background about um, who is kind of using the quit line and who we serve. Um, about 45% of our participants struggle with a mental health condition, and the vast majority of, majority of them um, have told us that they feel like this does make it harder for them um, to quit tobacco. Um, I'd also like to mention, it's not on the slide, but about 40% of our um, callers are Medicaid participants, so, so we do um, serve a large um, group from that population. Um, female tobacco users are more likely to call the quit line than men. Um, African Americans make up over half of all quit line callers, um, and as we've already um, discussed, those with less education were more likely to smoke. We can advance to the next one. Um, so in terms of um, the results that we've gotten from our evaluation, um, Almost all participants would recommend the quit line, um, very satisfied. Um, and those who used uh, any form of NRT were much more satis satisfied with the program um, than those who didn't use these products. Um, our quit rate tends to be around 30%, um, both for uh, callers and web users, and most um, participants did smoke less cigarettes at the end of the program. We can move ahead to the next slide. We do have a special program um, for pregnant women. So in addition to the multi-call program, um, pregnant women are eligible for up to 10 calls. The standard uh, protocol is four calls. So in addition to the 10-call program, they can qualify for 
the rewards program, and through this program, they're able to earn gift cards, up to $90 in gift cards, um, for completing their calls um, while pregnant and postpartum um, to stores like Target and Babies R Us. Um, and no referral is required for this program. They can simply call the quit line, 1-800-QUIT-NOW, and um, express interest in getting enrolled. Um, and so we have this, this available, um, hopefully, as an incentive um, for pregnant women to quit smoking. Um, so we know that uh, health system change is really key for tobacco control. Um, the vast majority of tobacco users do see a health provider each year, um, if not more than one time a year. Um, and so it is a captive audience and um, a great place to start um, really uh, with interventions um, for this population. Can to the next slide? Um, and so health system change will look uh, different depending on which practice um, you're talking about, but certainly what we want to incorporate um, everywhere is screening every patient, advising them to quit, um, and updating um, the EHR, e EMR, um, to make these interventions routine and really just a part of every visit. Um, and we at the state level are providing uh, technical assistance for, um, for health system change. Next slide. Um, so there are Medicare benefits available as well as um, Medicaid benefits um, in terms of covering um, quit attempts, counseling sessions, um, and all health plans, um, all Medicaid health plans in Maryland cover all seven um, recommended cessation medications. So this is certainly um, something to keep in mind. Next slide. Um, so in terms of our um, callers, uh, just about half of them report having at least um, one chronic health condition, um, so COPD, asthma, uh, diabetes, and coronary artery disease. Um, and we know that folks who um, have chronic health conditions are probably seeing their health care providers um, more often than others. Next slide. And so again, this is just some more um, data about um, our callers with chronic conditions. Next slide. Um, so in terms of how to refer to the quit line, um, we have the fax referral, which I will discuss um, on the next slide. We also have electronic referrals. Um, and really the benefits of referral are that you really are able to take action um, during your appointment as opposed to, um, you know, advising them to do something in the future. You're really able to do something right then. Um, it is a practice step, um, and it provides you with an outcome report. So regardless of how you refer, you are able to um, find out whether the patient um, was reached and whether they accepted services. Um, and it does eliminate barriers um, for patients. Um, if they're unsure about calling the quit line, if you do refer them, the quit line will call them um, within 48 hours of the referral. Next slide. Um, so in terms of the electronic referral, um, it, we have two ways to do it. So the one is through the EHR. So this is something you're able to set up um, kind of in coordination with um, your technical folks or your IT folks. Once you get that system set up, um, they'll do a test trial, and then you're really up and ready to go um, with sending e-referrals. We also have the email, um, email referral. Um, and I just want to make a note that email that's listed there um, will be transitioning um, on July 1st to support services at optum.com. Um, that's kind of a transition that they're doing with their rebranding. Uh, next slide. Um, so Dr. Di Clemente and, and Di Quit are one of our partners in this work, and they offer several trainings for providers, um, some of which are listed here, and more information is available on mdquit.org. Next slide. Um, at the Department of Health, we also offer um, some trainings and a webinar for providers. These are all online. Um, the links are listed, and I believe the, um, that you'll have access to the presentation, so you can take a look. Um, our newest one is the e-referral training, so that um, will train providers um, in terms of uh, kind of getting in the know of how, um, how exactly the e-referral works and what patients can expect when they're, um, once they get enrolled. Next slide. So this is just a fact, um, the fact with this program. This is, again, uh, something that we partner with MDQuit for. Um, and so you'll get the uh, patient's consent, and then uh, you're able to refer them using this form. Next slide. We do have um, a couple of campaigns that are ongoing right now. Uh, 2016 marks the 10th birthday of the quit line. So we have a whole suite of materials. Um, you can advance to the next slide. Um, so this is just a sample of our materials. This is on transit, TV. Um, really all over, and we're happy to share these materials if anyone's interested in um, the posters and flyers if they'd like to put them up. Next slide. 
We also have a point of care campaign um, targeting pregnant women and Medicaid participants. Um, you can advance to the next slide. And so this is in um, doctor's offices, pharmacies, um, and you can see some examples here um, of these materials that are posted up. Um, and so this is really just to um, reach people when they are seeking care and thinking about care and thinking about making changes to their health. Uh, next slide. Um, just some, a couple of compliments that we've received on the quit line. Um, folks really do like the program. Uh, they appreciate the support. The NRT is really, really helpful. And yeah, so that's pretty much it. I just wanted to mention that all of our materials are available um, on smokingstopfear.com to order for free if anyone is interested. Um, and we do have a provider video that we are working on. Um, so I would love to get some feedback if anyone's interested in providing it on um, what uh, format might be helpful. This is a video that we were thinking of um, for waiting rooms um, to share online with patients. Um, so we'd love to hear from providers if um, there's a certain format, uh, file format, that would be helpful. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. I think we're probably saving questions for the end. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, and Rita, if you want to go ahead and go. I do. Good afternoon to everyone. I am Rita Miller from the Virginia Department of Health, and I serve with the Tobacco Use Control Program, and I'm so happy to be with you this afternoon to share with you the services that we have here at Quitman, Virginia. Uh, much of what I'm going to share with you, you've already heard, um, because now and the services that we provide are provided by other states as well. So let's just think of this as a summary of what you've heard already today. Um, but there are some things that might be a little bit different about Virginia. So we started our program in 2005 um, here at the Virginia Department of Health. And, of course, it's an evidence-based tobacco cessation phone and web counseling program. And we also serve residents ages 13 and older. We're available seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Next slide. So the services we offer, as I said, are cell phone and also web-based. Um, we offer our services 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and we have self-help materials that are available not only to the smoker or the tobacco user who calls the line, but also if you or anyone on your staff is interested in finding out more about the quit line or uh, making materials available to the people who come to see you in your office, um, you may call and get those services, get those um, materials as well. Also, if a person calls a quit line and they also need support within their local community, we also provide services, a service to them where they can find out the local resources where they can get help in their local communities as well. Next slide. Now, anyone can call the quit line if you are a smoker, um, if you smoke with tobacco, e-cigs, um, vape products, whatever, you are welcome to call the quit line. But one of the things that people aren't aware of, is, aware of is anyone who is seeking information about the quit line, they want to know more about quitting, they want to help a family member or a friend or whatever, they are welcome to call the quit line and have a conversation with the quit coach because um, they can parlay that information back to the person that they are concerned about. Um, Friends and family that, and coworkers are also welcome to call the quit line. So if you know of anyone who just wants to know about the quit line, they are more than welcome to call. Next slide. So when you call the quit line, of course, we're the Virginia Department of Health, and we collect a lot of data. So we're going to want to know about the person, a lot about um, their somewhat personal life, you know, their age and education, how much they smoke. Um, the history of their tobacco use, we want to know when they, when they started smoking. Um, we also want to know what their needs and what their, and the services that they're desiring. Um, as Dr. DiClemente said, you know, everybody, well, not everybody comes to the quit line at the same place. And so that is determined so that we can uh, make an assessment as to what we need to do and how those persons need to be helped. We also talk about um, previous criticisms and relapses because, as has been stated, it is very hard to quit smoking. And so um, we want to assess what it is that um, or how they have been trying to quit smoking and how long they've been trying to quit smoking so that a quit plan can be developed for that individual. Uh, there may be life experiences that may affect the quit attempt, and so we also try to assess what that, what that is and also encourage them to call back for additional help if that is needed. Next slide. 
frontline services are effective as we've been with for experts with us. Um, the use of NRT and quick services are most effective, but if not, certainly if a person calls the quick line and uh, seeks the help from a counselor, then more than likely um, over time they will be able to uh, double their chances of quitting. Next slide. So the quick coaches are uh, persons who are very prepared to work with the client to call. They have over 240 hours of training and evaluation, and then after that, they have three weeks of, sup of supervised calls, and all the while they're being seen, um, their work is being overseen by a physician. So uh, one of the things we want to assure you is that um, the persons who are working with their clients and patients who are calling are certainly prepared to do so. Next slide. Virginia also offers a tax referral service, and as you've heard, it does, um, it does link uh, the, the quit line to the individual who you refer to the quit line. And so one of the things that um, we know is that sometimes it's very difficult for people to take the first step in calling the quit line. So this is something that's very easy to integrate into your practice. But the other thing is, next slide. We can assure that if you're asking, advising, or referring people to the quit line, more than likely um, they will have an opportunity to at least hear the voice of someone who wants to help them quit smoking. Next slide. And so by using the quit line, or using the fact, excuse me, using the quit line, uh, it ensures contact and also makes sure that a call is made to the individual so you as a provider don't have to be frustrated and wondering whether or not the individual who probably promised you that they would call has indeed called. Also, you will receive a outcome report back, and so therefore you will know what happened with the call, whether the person accepted service, the client service, or if indeed the person was actually reached. But in order for you to um, participate in the factor referral program, then you would have to register as a factor referral site. And that is a very simple process. Next slide. Um, there is a registration form that you complete, and it is very simple to do. You would send that uh, form to me at VDA for processing, and then I will send you back what we call our fax to quick packet that will have a patient uh, referral form along with some other help materials that will uh, make your your process very easy that you do in your office, and then you can begin utilizing the service. Next slide. Um, as it has been stated, you will receive an outcomes report about each patient that was referred to the quit line, and then also you will receive from me the monthly fast referral report that we receive from Optum or uh, formerly known as a leader. Um, so that you can know not only what your practice is doing, but also what is happening throughout the state with fact referral services. Our, next slide. Our services are also provided by uh, Optum, and they've always provided our services. We are, we are very pleased with them. They do a very good job with our patients. And we also have very good results and evaluations from the patient's time that they spent with Optum. Next slide. We also offer materials and resources that um, you can uh, request for your office. We have uh, brochures and notepads and posters, um, and so we would be more than happy to uh, send them to you free of charge. And um, because we know that sometimes it's difficult to um, have a conversation with the patient but not have it something to give them so that they can remember um, about the quick line or to call the quick line so we can make those things available to you. Next slide. And also, the Virginia Department of Health offers data reports, burden reports, um, connections to local resources, and we also have regional coordinators throughout the state and that can be very uh, beneficial and helpful to your practice as well. So if you're interested in any of those um, things, you are welcome to call me, and I'll be happy to connect you with uh, any of the services or any of the reports or anything that you might need. Next slide, and I think we might be ready for questions.
Okay, great. Um, thank you all um, for the wealth of resources. Um, as our speakers mentioned today, um, the handouts were sent out yesterday. Um, if you have received those in your email, certainly reach out to us and we can get those to you. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we have just a couple minutes, so I will go ahead and ask um, Vicki, our conference operator, if you can um, remind callers how to call in with their question or um, perhaps if anyone wants to type their questions into chat. Also, while we're waiting for questions to come through, you should have seen an evaluation um, poll pop up in the right-hand um, portion of your screen. If you could please complete that, we would greatly appreciate it. And as we wait for questions, I'll just uh, remind individuals that we have a couple webinars coming up next week. Um, you can register for either of those events by um, accessing the, the links provided on the slide, and we'll also put those in chat. And as mentioned, this um, session was recorded and will be posted on the HQC online community. Uh, certainly also you can reach out to us if you want to obtain that recording. And I'll pause here. Uh, Vicki, do we have any questions um, that came through the line? Well, let me just uh, let uh, parties know that if they do have a question, please press star then one on your touch tone phone. If you wish to be removed from the queue, please press the pound sign or the hash key. And if you're using a speaker phone, you may need to pick up the handset for first before pressing the numbers. Once again, if you have a question, please press star then one on your touch tone phone. And do any of our speakers have any final comments? Okay. It doesn't look like we have any questions in chat. We'll give um, callers a moment if they want to call in. And this here listed on um, the slide as we have a couple of EHQC contacts, um, so please feel free to reach out to us to uh, learn about more about some of the different activities uh, that we can work with you on. And it looks like we have um, one question in chat, and the question is, does Virginia have any plans to incorporate the Quit Now electronically like Maryland? We are looking into that now. Um, what we're learning is that the Virginia system will be changing in the next uh, 6 to 12 months, and so we're waiting until the, the system that they put into place is is uh, up and running, and then we will be looking into um, creating a, an electronic health record system as well. Great. And also, I wanted to let um, Virginia providers know that um, the fax form that Rita spoke about was also prevented, or excuse me, also included with the handouts that we distributed last um, yesterday as well. Vicki, did we have any um, callers come through the line? Amy may have no questions from the on the audio side. Okay. Well, with that, I am proud of our speakers. We've made it up into uh, our time, actually a minute early. <laughs> so thank you all for um, a great session. Um, I personally will be sharing these resources with some of my family and friends that I know that are having trouble um, quitting smoking. And in fact, a couple that have stopped and um, started to pick it back up. So I appreciate you. Um, sharing these resources. Um, again, individuals that needed a copy of the slides and didn't receive them, uh, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, with that, we will conclude today's session, and we really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Thank so much. you. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This concludes today's conference. Thank you for participating. You may now disconnect.